In some breaking news, Judge Cannon, who just weeks ago opted to dismiss Donald Trump's classified documents and Espionage Act case down in Florida, has set a trial date in the criminal case of Ryan Ruth, the would-be assassin of Donald Trump, for November 18th. In other words, the judge who allowed Donald Trump to delay his case over and over and over suddenly learned how to quickly set a trial date when the case involves someone who's hostile to Trump. Who could have possibly guessed? And look, it's certainly possible that this is what's called a control date, a date simply put on the calendar to comply with the Speedy Trial Act in the Constitution, which will almost assuredly be pushed back as motions get filed that need to be litigated. Remember, the classified documents case also was assigned a trial date of May 20th, which of course Judge Cannon blew past because she never had any intention of bringing that case to trial in the first place. And so my beef here isn't necessarily that she complied with the Speedy Trial Act, it's that in the Trump case, she had no real intention of complying with it in practice. But as far as the speed with which she's acting now, I mean honestly, the difference is pretty egregious. Judge Cannon was assigned Donald Trump's case on June 10th, 2023. Over the next 13 months, she would go on to scold the DOJ, to grant Donald Trump's team's absurd motions, to ignore the trial date requested by both parties, but especially by Trump's team, strike elements of the indictment against Trump, and then ultimately just dismiss the case outright. That is 13 months of purposeful delay and bad faith maneuvering as she handed his team every single victory they sought before ultimately doing what we knew she would do all along by dismissing the case under this bogus pretense that suddenly special counsels are unconstitutional in this country even though they've been used since the 1800s and their legality has been upheld numerous times in court. But none of that mattered because the name of the game was helping Donald Trump no matter the optics and no matter the law. And yet here, she managed to get assigned the case on September 24th and within one week assigned a trial date for the following month. It really is remarkable what a judge could be capable of when she exists to serve at the altar of the man responsible for giving her her job. And again, the beef here isn't that Judge Cannon chose a speedy trial date. That much is literally ascribed in the US Constitution. The beef is that when Trump was in the defendant's chair, she gave him exactly the delay he sought on every issue before ultimately handing him the ultimate prize with a dismissal. When in reality, Trump should 100% have gone to trial and been convicted in what was objectively the most damning case against him. And by the way, that case will almost certainly be reinstated by the 11th Circuit and hopefully sent back to the trial track under a different judge. So don't think that Judge Cannon's decision is irreversible, even though the damage that she's done to her profession is. Now, let's be real here. The first thing that Ryan Ruth's attorney is going to do is file a motion to recuse. Judge Cannon will almost assuredly deny that motion, at which point they may look to the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals to take up the issue of her removal. And I say that she'll almost assuredly deny the motion because if she doesn't, then imagine how that move would factor into the Trump case. Imagine how it'll look suddenly if the same judge who felt it was appropriate to preside over Trump's case says that she can't preside over a case about the would-be Trump assassin. The atmospheric precedent would set would be guaranteed to be brought up when Jack Smith argues for his appeal in front of the 11th Circuit, meaning Judge Cannon really has no choice but to try and preside over this case, setting up an impending battle over her possible recusal at the hands of Ryan Roos' attorney. And keep in mind, the move by Judge Cannon to dismiss Donald Trump's case may actually come back to haunt her and Trump. Here's Glenn Kirshner discussing that prospect during an episode of The Legal Breakdown that we recorded in the immediate aftermath of Trump's classified documents case being dismissed. We knew all along Trump appointed Judge Aileen Cannon was going to get rid of this case one way or another. And stay with me here and I hope our viewers will stay with us because this may end up being the best damn thing that has happened to Donald Trump's Florida prosecution for what illegally retaining classified documents, obstructing justice, and violating our nation's espionage laws. This is a big flipping deal case because the man is being nominated, you know, by the Republican Party to, you know, perhaps be president of the United States again. And he put our country at extreme risk. I mean, an extreme national security risk. So this may end up being the best thing that ever happened to this case it will ultimately and inevitably be appealed to the 11th Circuit. So I don't know that urgency is of the moment the way it was several months ago when we thought more of these prosecutions might get to trial before the November election. So this may be put on the more normal track, at least on the timing front, and the 11th Circuit will order briefs, will have oral arguments, will take some time. So 
it could be not just a matter of weeks, but a matter of a couple of months before we get an opinion out of the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals. I believe that opinion will be probably the third Judge Cannon reversal, because this case, this issue, has been litigated by federal court judge after federal court judge after federal, four in all, this precise issue, and every single one, most of them with far more judicial experience than Aileen Cannon, said no, no, no. These appointments are lawful, they are constitutional, and special counsel absolutely is entitled to do this kind of work on behalf of the Department of Justice. Glenn, given the fact that this case was dismissed on the grounds that a special counsel is unconstitutional, can the DOJ just swap out Jack Smith for an, a, a sitting U.S. attorney in the Florida documents case and in the D.C. 2020 election case and simply remedy the issue? That's a great question. And the answer is yes, because if the whole concern was that you brought a civilian in from outside of the Department of Justice, and here's the irony, Brian, the reason Merrick Garland did it was to give some separation between the Department of Justice, the Attorney General, and by extension, the President, the White House, give some separation and some independence to the special counsel so he wouldn't, you know, be tainted by pressures from the White House and the Attorney General. And of course now, what this case contemplates is that no, 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 you should just have some of the regular U.S. attorneys still under the control authority and supervision of the attorney general. Those should be the prosecutors handling this case. So it's a great question and absolutely they can simply swap out Jack Smith, put a new lead prosecutor on the case who could be one of the many, one of the 93 United States attorneys. It doesn't necessarily have to be the one down in Florida. And here's the other thing, they can simply bring Jack Smith onto the team. So institutional right. knowledge will not even be lost. But here's the thing, if they bring somebody else in, a U.S. attorney, for example, they're gonna have to represent the case to a grand jury, they're gonna have to ha get the case reindicted, and then they're gonna have to get it back on track. But there's really no reason that all the work that has already gone into this, like goes away and they have to start from jump. It will all kind of be brought under the umbrella of the new case and it will continue to move forward. And to that point, my next Legal Breakdown episode will cover this exact issue, diving deeper into the implications of this case, what comes next, and how Judge Cannon's decisions here may impact the currently dismissed case against Trump. So if you wanna watch that episode, please make sure to subscribe to this channel. But what's clear here is that her continued presence on the bench is a slap in the face to anyone who expects an unbiased judge to rule on the basis of the law, as opposed to what's in the best interest of the guy who appointed her to her seat. On that front, she's already shown that she isn't willing to put her own biases aside. Before you go, just a quick note, if you'd like to see more of my content, which is always free of advertising, sponsorships, and paywalls, please make sure to subscribe to this channel using the subscribe button right here on the screen. And if you'd like to support my work even further, you can grab a copy of my instant number one New York Times selling book, Shameless, available for sale right now. That link is also on the screen. Thanks so much for watching.